lives of its own people and um, in the region it's just a particularly poignant and in 2010 I had a sense that as a volunteer organizer myself that it was the right fit and to offer the map. In 2010 I conducted a pair comparison of the smuggling markets in two communities in rural El Salvador. I then spent a year uh, trying to unpack the journey itself, living out of a migrant shelter in Mexico and traveling the route, conducting interviews with people in passage. Um, the reasons people come to this country, and then really I'm talking um, especially um, for from 2005 to probably 2012, 2013, there was, the, there was the, the push of the lack of jobs, and there was the pull of families. And in a study that was done by the Catholic University in 2008, Violence ranked low, and like 19% of the population said this was the most significant problem. It was poverty, lack of jobs, and then corruption in the government were considered the big problems. As an immigration lawyer, I really can't watch the news with this because it doesn't seem like most people um, kind of point out the obvious, at least to me, and the obvious is that uh, someone um, can come here and apply for asylum. It's not illegal. In fact, it's the opposite. It's legal. Fluorescent lighting. And so now they're in this very artificial environment. And it's it's very difficult. And the jails don't often get translators in their languages. And through this map told me, uh, it, it, migrants are migrants. It doesn't matter if we move. To be a migrant is to be exploited. And that was his experience of El Salvador. Back there for illegal immigration, and we are working hard to remove this magnet. He used the word magnet. That's not my word, that's ICE's word. So let's have an honest discussion about the magnet in Wisconsin. Um, outside of Madison and Milwaukee and maybe some of the other big cities, um, by far the biggest magnet in Wisconsin is the dairy farms. Um, and this is not, this is not a secret. Uh, there was a study back in 2009 by a UW professor, and her estimate was that there were about 40% 40, 40 of the uh, dairy um, workforce was uh, immigrants, and most likely all of those were undocumented. Uh, apparently in 1998, the, the number was 5%. Uh, today, I'd be surprised if it's not in the neighborhood of, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 percent. I don't know. With family separation and um, certain populations being ostracized is not new, right? This is a picture of Native Americans who were taken to boarding school and stripped of their language and culture. And also, slave families were often separated at auction. And this sign is from the 1950s. So one of the things I also like to bring up is the language and organizations, indigenous communities, mestizos, progressive Catholics, labor unions, teachers, students. So really bad people, right? And they're being labeled by the media as the, the gorillas. Um. Caravans that were being organized in Mexico by some of the albergues to call attention to abuses of migrants within Mexico, um, and they've been going on for many, many years. What's going on with the Hondurans right now seems rather uh, more from below. The caravana, the uh, caminata, is another word that gets thrown around by the activists. Um, these have been going on a very long time. They come out of a Catholic tradition in the migrant shelters where they began to take caminatas or long walks with Jesus on Easter to symbolize the way that uh, the migrant journey mirrors or reflects much of the experience of the Bible. Um, and so the priests would organize these and they would always be northward bound. Um, 
the time to learn the history behind what's happening and so, so that we can get to the root causes for solution and understand how false and man-made borders are and that migration is a human need and that we should make it work for human beings. Yeah.